Vanessa. I'm here today to wrap up the first few books that I read for Nonfiction November 2020. I'm breaking this up into two videos because I feel like the collections of books that I have for each video really go well with each other and compare and contrast very well. So my idea for this video is to actually say what it is about these books that they have very similar to each other and then what some books do more effectively than others. I ended up giving two of them three stars and then one four stars and then two of them four and a half stars. I kind of want to explain how it is that I came to those conclusions. First I guess I should just show you all of them. So the first two that I will talk about are You Ought to Do a Story About Me by Ted Jackson and then the other one is Down Along with That Devil's Bones by Connor Town O'Neill. Then after that I ended up reading Standoff which is probably the least like the others in this pile but I still think that there's some similarities. This is by Jamie Thompson. I have two more and they are Katrina A History 1915 to 2015 by Andy Horowitz and A Knock at Midnight by Brittany K. Barnett. These were probably the standouts and then this one was the four star one and then these two were the three star ones. So let's explore why that is. The fact that I started my nonfiction November with these two books kind of made me feel like my reading wasn't gonna go well this month. I feel like two things that these two books have very similar to each other is the way that they come across in the audiobook experience of them. So the first book here is You Ought to Do a Story About Me and this is a reporter following the life of Jackie Wallace who was in the NFL for a few years before everything kind of came crashing down on him. He didn't really make it in the NFL, he wasn't there for very long, and then he found himself addicted to drugs and then also ended up experiencing homelessness. It's about his life from childhood to going to the NFL and then this chance encounter between a reporter and Jackie Wallace and the friendship that spawned from there. This book down along with that devil's bones is about confederate monuments specifically it's looking at nathan bedford forest and where in the united states there are monuments for him and the author is really looking into this movement of people in the past 10 years or so who are wanting to bring these monuments down to them they are uh, emblems of white supremacy contrasting that with the people who believe that this is history and that if you tear down these monuments you are tearing down a part of american history so he kind of interviews these different groups and goes to different states it's kind of a travelogue in parts. I found that both of these, I did not feel passionate about reading these books and if I was reading them or if I wasn't reading them or listening to them, I didn't really care. I think that tells you something about a book, how much it makes you want to pick it up versus you not really caring if you pick it up or not. I felt that the writing was a little bit dry for both of these and that came across to me in the audiobook narration. Not that they were bad listens or that I didn't find things in here that I really did enjoy. I just didn't feel that drive and that passion and that like I need to know what's going to happen next with these two books when it came to the audiobook narration. I also found that in Ted Jackson's You Ought to Do a Story About Me, the main character or the person that we're following the subject didn't necessarily feel to me like an interesting enough person to have a 300 page book devoted to him. It's partly that but it's also a book about the reporter himself but I don't think I ever got a sense of what the addiction really did to Jackie. It was more about like what the reporter thought that it did to Jackie and what it actually did to the reporter himself and I feel like there was a lack there of Jackie really wanting to tell his story. I think it's interesting to keep in mind that for this one the author is mostly a photojournalist and I think that came through in the book. So I ended up giving this one three stars. Uh, I ended up giving Down Along With That Devil's Bones three stars as well just because of the meandering way that it felt like sometimes the narration went. We were in so many different places following so many different people and the only things that I truly found super interesting were following the black activists at a few of the campuses, specifically MTSU, and also following the work of the Equal Justice Initiative with Brian Stevenson in Alabama. So I found those chapters really interesting, but again, kind of like a mixed bag here because we're following multiple stories in multiple states. So that's for the first two, my three star reads, and I really wanted things to pick up, and thankfully it did. And it did reading Standoff by Jamie Thompson. This is looking into the 2016 shootings and killings of five police officers in Dallas. The person who committed them believed himself to be doing this for black liberation. What this book is is a minute by minute account of what happened that day and what has happened since. I found it really really fascinating to read this book, um, not because I agreed with what was happening here or that I found that 
that the subjects that the author is dealing with are always right, but that it felt to me like it was very honest and it was also written in a way that felt narrative driven, which was in contrast to these two books. So the way that this was written, I finished this book in two days. I was so into the audiobook narration. I was really engrossed. So I could compare these two books because Standoff also started as a long-form journalism piece just like this one did in the 90s, but I felt like in Standoff there could be 300 pages devoted to the story and all the intricacies and looking into all of the subjects. Meanwhile, in this book I didn't feel like there was enough meat to the story to devote this many pages to it. We are mostly following the people who were caught in the crossfire that night. They were protesters, the mayor and the chief of police and what they're thinking of doing in the situation. They're following all the SWAT members that went into the building to try to finally defuse the threat. Again, the thing about this book is that there are very rootable people in this book. There are also a lot of people in this book that I vociferously disagree with and the way that they believe force is so necessary for literally everything and this is seen a lot in the SWAT members. I understand that that lived experience is different than than what I could even imagine so it's just interesting to me to learn from those perspectives of people who are very very different than I am. Probably the most interesting person in this book is the negotiator that is part of the SWAT team. His background as a police officer kind of mixed with his upbringing you know as a black boy in a poverty-stricken neighborhood, how those two things make this very three-dimensional person. A really interesting look into SWAT police officers, what they do, how they think, and people that I I don't know if I could be their friends, like I don't think we have anything in common, but it's just interesting to hear their perspectives. All right, now let's talk about Katrina, A History, 1915 to 2015 by Andy Horowitz. This is definitely the most academic kind of text out of these five books, and it definitely does not read as fast as, say, Standoff would read. This is one of the books that I started towards the beginning and I didn't really finish until towards the end of the month and I would just read the little chapters at a time. There are so many footnotes in this book and resources that you could really just go wild. <laughs> you can tell that he really enjoyed putting all of that together. I think what makes this book special is how it looks into policy and how policy has for many many hundreds of years created the situation that happened with Hurricane Katrina. The attention from public officials and the government in general was never there to make something like Hurricane Katrina not happen. One of the things that I found the most fascinating was the dismantling of basically any safety net to the people who were in power, the government officials, like this is a time to start over and to start over without having public housing, without having a public hospital, and without having really a public education system. They've truly demolished all of those three things for the better of New Orleans. The public officials helped homeowners over renters, people who already had money over people who did not have money, how they helped people get loans instead of grants, and just kind of the strings that were attached that really disadvantaged a lot of people who had made New Orleans their home. There's a lot in this book also about the stereotypes of what happened right during Katrina and right after, looking into how the media looked at the city and how they described what they were seeing. That is really damning and made me really angry reading it. There's a whole section of this that taught me about how many people were shot after Katrina thinking that they were doing something bad or ominous and really they were just trying to survive. I'm really glad that I read this book and as someone who is just fascinated by Hurricane Katrina, everything surrounding it, this is fascinating. Here's another comparison and contrast. Uh, these two books look at New Orleans in general. Jackie Wallace grew up in the 60s and 70s and so seeing Hurricane Betsy come up and kind of what New Orleans was like as Jackie was growing up, you could see it through this book as well. Another set that has the same setting in a way are Standoff and A Knock at Midnight. These both take place in Texas and the Dallas area. I read this book and right after I read this book and just seeing the city come alive in both of these books was fascinating to me. Another comparison that I have which shows you kind of why I liked one book more than the other has to do with the story of addiction and how addiction is portrayed in these two books. You Ought to Do a Story About Me and A Knock at Midnight. I already told you about this book, so let me tell you about A Knock at Midnight. This is probably the best book 
that I read all of nonfiction November and one that I definitely think that you should think about reading. Especially if you enjoy books like Just Mercy, I think this is on par with Just Mercy in how it's basically a lawyer looking into cases that are really unjust and fighting to help the people who have been wronged by these horrible laws, mostly in the 80s and 90s. It's also a book that I would compare to The New Jim Crow and how it looks at history, but I would say it's more readable than The New Jim Crow because it's mostly stories about all of the clients that Brittany K. Barnett is trying to help. If you've read The Short and Tragic Life of Robert Peace, I think this is comparable to that book as well because it looks at how easy it is or how easy it is to get involved in the drug trade, to do it to make ends meet because you're having troubles for a period of time and you just think you're gonna do it for a few months and then something happens where basically you end up screwed. She brings up these books. She talks about Brian Stevenson. She talks about The Short and Tragic Life of Robert Peace. She talks about The New Jim Crow in this book. So I was kind of glad to read another one that's very similar to those three. When I described this book in my Nonfiction November TBR, I mostly talked about how it was about a woman named Sharonda Jones and how Brittany K. Barnett was trying to help her. That is what this book is mostly about, but I was really fascinated because this book was so much more. It wasn't just following one case, it was following maybe five, six, or seven of her clients, some with more depth than others. Like for example, Sharonda Jones definitely takes up the majority of this book, but also I was extremely touched by how this book talked about addiction. And comparing to how it was talked about in You Ought to Do a Story About Me, I thought that A Knock at Midnight did it so much more successfully. So we start this book off really talking about Brittany K. Barnett's mother slowly becoming addicted to drugs and what that did to Brittany K. Barnett and her sister, what it did to their family dynamic, and her mother ended up going to prison for a few years. The way that she portrayed it came across so much more genuine to me. It made me feel like I understood the situation where she really wanted her mom to get help but knew that this wasn't something that her mom could just like easily fix. Also seeing kind of the disappointment and also how she roots for her mother, just this very complex relationship with someone who is addicted to drugs, right? I just felt like You Ought to Do a Story About Me didn't have that same feeling to it. And then this book kind of flips. She talks about how she ended up going to law school and how while she was in law school she took really interesting classes on like critical race theory. How that really changed her mind where she in her day job had continued to climb this ladder as a corporate lawyer. This law had really nothing to do with the human component and that's what she ended up doing as her night job basically. I think the way that she frames this makes it critical. Their freedom is so important and that's because the laws of the 80s and 90s when it came to drugs were so punitive. You could be a first-time drug offender and be facing life in prison, and many of her clients in this book do for that same reason. First-time drug offenders in prison for life, no parole. And the way she explains it as why it's wrong, there was this ratio between charging people for crack versus cocaine and the disparities of that that came from race. I think she does a phenomenal job at showing us why it is wrong. She does this for a lot of clients and to see how humanizing this book is. One of her main things is that she wants to get to know them. She doesn't want to get to know their case first, she wants to get to know them and then get to know their case. And that made this book so touching, similar to Brian Stevenson's Just Mercy, where you really got to know the people and their abilities, their passions, their personalities, their business acumens, and the things that they have going for them. And this wasted potential that you see of them being in prison when they could be running businesses on the outside. While there are multiple subjects, like in Standoff, that I disagree and agree with, I feel like these two books show you people's real inner thoughts, and it felt like I really got to know the subjects in these two books. So these two books have the most narrative drive to them. I wanted to continue listening to both of these audiobooks, and I felt really connected to what was happening to the people. Very, very powerful book about unfair drug laws and what one person, one lawyer, has accomplished as a result of that. A very good book. I ended up giving this one four and a half stars. So that's it for all of them. When it comes to ranking them in order of like my favorites of what I got from them, how interested and invested I was in the book, I think it'd be number one, A Knock at Midnight, number two, Katrina, number three, Standoff, number four, down along and then number five you ought to do a story about me please let me know in the comments if you've read any of them or want to read any of them i'm interested to find out thank you so much for watching my video and i'll see you in my next one bye bye